Hi y'all, how you doing today? Well, we are excited to um, finish the week strong, so I hope that you guys are excited. I am, it's Friday, so thank God it's Friday. We made it through another week, right guys? And it was a great week, it was a great week for me, and I hope it was a great week for you guys too. So welcome, welcome to Periscope. I'm just uh, taking a little break and uh, talking to you guys about victimization. So, tell me what has God done for you, Fran? I do want to tell, I do want to hear. So, share a little bit, share a little bit. You've been so stressed and worried about your future. I know that. I've been praying for that on Sundays. Hi, Kathy. Good to have you back on Periscope today. Good, good. So you guys, a victim mindset and a victim mentality is whenever you have been a victim in the past, but you continue to think of yourself as a victim in the present. So you continue to dwell on that. You're worried about getting into the program. You thought you didn't get in. So you turn to the army. All right. And then what? <laughs> and then what? I can't wait to hear. You're almost two months into the process, okay? Wanting to get that degree. I'm I'm excited to hear the rest of the story, Fran, because I know that God is doing so much in your life. You start telling your husband, you think God is telling me it's not for me. Okay, okay, good. Good, hi, Brian, thanks for joining. Thank you guys all for joining. Um, kept calling, canceling appointments with the recruiter. Okay, okay, good, good. I can't wait for the rest of the story, Fran. Thank y'all for the hearts. Thanks so much. I'm talking about being a victim today. And Fran is overcoming a victim mentality that she's had. And she is really taking a hold of her future and telling us a little bit about what God's doing in her life, which is really cool. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Trina Titus Lozano. And I'm a counselor and an ordained Christian minister. And I'm really working on talking more slowly. You got the acceptance yesterday in the master's program for social work. Girl, you are ready to go. I'm telling you, no more complaining, no more worry, no more stress. Now you just got to gotta buckle down, right? Buckle down and work hard. Well, I'm so glad that that door opened for you because God's got wonderful things in store. We do our part. God does his part and all things are possible with God, right, Fran? I'm so excited. Thank you for sharing. I know a lot of the Periscopers were, were, were praying for you, so that is great. Thank you so much for that. And hi from Brazil. Hi, Amy. Hi. So, y'all, a victim mentality is, is just that place where we get in the state that we get in mentally of really feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, and, and we've all been a victim of some, of some sort, of some kind. We can all find something where there's been something that's really come against us. And, uh, for different people, if things are way more traumatic than others, but nevertheless, if we're not careful, we can each stay in this place. So the importance is, is that we really say, what now? That was then, this is now, what now? But you'll see that there's going to be some emotional effects of the victimization. So I want to talk about this in case you're dealing with some of these things, that you can deal with them, put them to rest, and literally move on. So um, some of the emotional effects of victimization is really is this feeling of powerlessness. You know, when you're a victim, you are powerless. You know, you, you're a victim. Someone is a perpetrator is coming against you. But you don't have to stay powerless in the present. So at this time in your life, you really can be more powerful and move past that. Um, but what's going to happen is there are generally some effects. And the residuals will be a low self-worth. So you'll have to really, really understand that your identity is not um, is not in the struggle. Your identity isn't about what has happened to you, but that you can really take the reins and change that. Because when there is a low self worth, it really it really will do a number on you. You can really come to a place of you're constantly trying to prove yourself, and so there can be a lot of pride. When it, which in reality, the other side of that coin is is insecurity. So there's pride and insecurity and, and really at the heart of low self-esteem is you're not willing to take the personal responsibility to make something of yourself. 
and to cope with what you need to do and to move to a place of, you know, saying, I'm going to, I'm going to better myself. I'm going to better my life. I'm going to take the personal responsibility to be proud of myself. Self-esteem is really something that you have to earn by, by doing what you're doing, Fran, things like that. Say, by saying, you know, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to get this master's degree. Okay. Um, you can find that you'll be critical. Uh, somebody with a really low self-esteem will start to be very critical of others and judgmental towards others. I talked about that yesterday. Being desperate for approval. Do I have anyone periscoping with me besides myself that have been approval addicts? I certainly have been approval addicts, a, an approval addict. And really, it's a mindset of, it's a, it's a victim's mentality, you know, to, to always be seeking approval. Because really, somewhere in your past, you learned that you just weren't good enough. You know, and then all the self-pity has, has left you with the idea that you're just not good enough. Okay, you're a people pleaser or you get very defensive, you know, and you don't want to just take on the personal responsibility. Oh man, Amy, it is subtle. For you big daddy wounds, yeah, but you know, that was them and this is now and those father wounds, they don't need to define you for the rest of your life, right? No, no. Not going to define you anymore. At this point in your life, you're going to take personal responsibility to to be awesome and to be wonderful and to to move past that. Okay, but it's not going to happen if you're stuck with the emotional wound of fear. And whenever you're stuck in fear, just as one of the emotional effects of that victimization, that's also going to be very problematic. I've done some periscopes on fear in the past, but it could be fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of affection, fear of intimacy, uh, fear of authority figures, and sometimes even having a real distorted um, view of God. Like where you, you know, and that's a danger if you don't deal with these things. You know, you can go to a place of even blaming God and even feeling like a victim where really God is your source for healing. So, um, so just, just remember you're not a victim of your fears. You're not a victim of your emotions. You can tackle that. And really the answer is that you do want to ask God to help you and walk you through that. Um, there's some people who have, um, who've had a victim's mentality and it leads them to obsessiveness or really be like sort of obsessive compulsive, um, wanting to be in control all the time. So anytime you feel like you might need to be in control and you become very manipulative, I was going to talk about manipulation earlier, but you know, I just didn't feel quite done talking about this. But that's not a healthy thing. And sometimes that is a sign that you've had this victim mentality, wanting to control more. People with a fear-based thinking, they always want to control more. They always do. They, they have this wrong belief that if they control more, then whatever they're really afraid of won't happen. And the reality is, is your control really doesn't have any power either to make sure that it doesn't happen. You're more powerful when you learn to just cope and to deal with things in the present rather than being afraid. And, and um, you know, and worried about what may never even happen. Yeah. Hi, Jonathan. Um, also, victim mentality can, can lead people to a dependency on food, on drugs, on alcohol, on approval, <laughs> um, you know, and these kind of things too. Um, even sometimes a dependency on religion, not in a good way, but in a bad way, when you're, where people are very, very dependent on, um, on the, on the rules and the laws and the, or sometimes the busyness of religion, you know, and that's negative too. That can be negative also. So, so let's really make a conscious effort to move past this victim mentality, to take the personal responsibility, to view things differently, to see God differently to see our abuser differently, to see our situation differently, and for sure to see your future differently because your future is bright. Your future is bright. And you know, I love, I love Romans 8, 28. God will use all of these things and he will work them together for your good. He will if you, if you really focus on the fact that you are called for his purpose. You're called for a personal relationship with God and you're called to really be an overcomer to be victorious. You can't be a victim and victorious simultaneously. You got to pick one. So I think that you'd rather be victorious than to stay in this place of being a victim because the emotional wounds that you're going to continue to deal with, <coughs> excuse me, are going to be 
not in your own best interest, okay? You might even find um, a compulsive behavior, you know? Um, but you don't want that either. So, you guys, there's also physical side effects of victimization. Sometimes there are sexual difficulties, sleeping disruptions, eating uh, disorders, memory disturbances, all kinds of negative things will, will end up being a part of your life if you don't move past this victim mentality. Okay, y'all? Don't stay there. It is so not worth it because you've got a lot of really good life to live. And I don't want you to be stuck in the past. Say, say out loud with me, that was then and this is now. Can you say that? That was then and this is now. And right now, I'm refusing to filter things through that victim mentality. All right? That was then and this is now. I'm not powerless now. I'm powerful. I'm going to separate my goals and desires and take the personal responsibility to move through to move through that situation and to think differently, okay? Um, I love Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds on things above, okay? Not just on earthly things. Thanks, Jonathan. That was then and this is now. Y'all, my friend June Hunt says that all the time. And that is such a good thing for her to say because she had a lot to recover from. And she did. I ended up being an author of many counseling books, hundreds of them. Um but, oh yeah, well, I think that you guys are awesome, and thank you for periscoping with me, and thanks for po posting my website, Jonathan, Trina, TitusLozano.com. I've got some great periscopes on there, past periscopes, and you can find the links on my website, which is hopefully going to be really helpful to you, especially goals and desires and fears. You know, these kinds of things are going to really help you uh, get through this next stage of your life of taking full responsibility. Oh, uh, Fran, I'm so excited about you. I'm really rejoicing about this next chapter in your life. It's really cool. Okay, a couple more scriptures, y'all. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Some of you already know this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Now, sometimes we don't understand. Most of the time, y'all, we don't understand. I always tell people to have the peace that passes understanding. You got to give up your right to understand because we just don't know. We don't know why things happened. We don't know why things are happening, but we do know that we could trust God with all of our heart because that's a choice that we can make. And so when we do that, we release our right to understand, and it's going to make it a whole lot better to move through to a place of victory in your life. So thank you all for periscoping with me today. You're victorious. That is your identity. Your identity is not this struggle. Your identity is not a victim. Your identity is that you're an overcomer, that you're victorious, and that you are willing to take the personal responsibility, right, y'all? You're a hard worker, and you are all kinds of wonderful things, but you're not going to stay a victim any longer, right? You've made a decision to move past that, to move through that, y'all, to move through it. So forgive your abusers and move through to being victorious, okay, you guys? I, I, I know that you all are going to do that, right? So God bless you guys. Thanks for periscoping with me today, and I'll be back at 9 o'clock tonight. And I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. And thank you so much for the hearts. I really appreciate that. And you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.